Welcome to the CE Way presentation about cosmetic product claims in the EU. Legislation that is covering cosmetic products in the EU is Regulation 1223-2009. The EU also published a regulation that deals specifically with cosmetic claims. This is EU Regulation 655-2013. Any product that wants to be sold as a cosmetic product needs to comply with the definition of a cosmetic product in the EU, meaning also that claims related to this product have to be in line with this definition. The definition of the cosmetic product in the EU is the following. Cosmetic product means any substance or mixture intended to be placed in contact with the external parts of the human body, the epidermis, hair system, nails, lips and external genital organs or with the teeth and the mucous membranes of the oral cavity with a view exclusively or mainly to cleaning them, perfuming them, changing their appearance, protecting them, keeping them in good condition, or correcting body odours. This definition is quite specific and does not encompass products presented as having properties for treating or preventing disease in human beings. Such activities are more in keeping with medicinal product intent. Any particular words or phrases which imply such claims will be taken into account in determining the intent behind the presentation. While not intending to be exhaustive, the following list contains examples of such words or phrases which present a medicinal intent. Cures, heals, treats, restores, prevents, clears, protects against disease, helps control the symptoms of, traditionally used for the treatment of, strengthens the immune system. However, a cosmetic product should also not primarily claim that it kills germs or microbes, as this would make it fall under the biocide regulation. Let's see now what the EU Cosmetic Regulation 1223-2009 says about the claims for cosmetic products. In the labelling, making available on the market and advertising of cosmetic products, text, names, trademarks, pictures and figurative or other signs shall not be used to imply that these products have characteristics or functions which they do not have. The consumer should be protected from misleading claims concerning efficacy and other characteristics of cosmetic products. The EU also published another regulation, Regulation 655-2013, that is laying down common criteria for the justification of claims used in relation to cosmetic products. The common criteria only comes into play when it has been assessed that the product in question is indeed a cosmetic product and is not aimed at defining and specifying the wording that can be used for cosmetic product claims. According to this regulation, claims on cosmetic products shall conform to the following common criteria. Legal compliance. Truthfulness. Evidential support. Honesty. Fairness. And informed decision making. Next, we'll explain a bit more about each of these common criteria. Legal compliance. Claims that indicate that the product has been authorised or approved by a competent authority within the Union shall not be allowed since a cosmetic product is allowed on the Union market without any governmental approval. Equally, a CE mark shall not be applied on cosmetic products. The acceptability of a claim shall be based on the perception of the average end user of a cosmetic product, who is reasonably well informed and reasonably observant and circumspect, taking into account social, cultural and linguistic factors in the marketing question. Claims that convey an idea that a product has specific benefit when this benefit is mere compliance with minimum legal requirements shall not be allowed. An example of this is the claim, this product does not contain hydroquinonine. Such a claim would not be allowed since hydroquinonine is banned for use in cosmetic products in the EU. Truthfulness Neither the general presentation of the cosmetic product nor individual claims made for the product shall be based on false or irrelevant information. For example, silicon-free shall not be claimed for products that contain silicon. If a product claims that it contains a specific ingredient, the ingredient shall be deliberately present. Ingredient claims referring to the properties of a specific ingredient shall not imply that the finished product has the same properties when it does not. An example could be when a product claims that it contains moisturising aloe vera when the product itself has no moisturising effect. Marketing communications shall not imply that expressions or opinions are verified claims unless the opinion reflects verifiable evidence. 
evidential support. Claims for cosmetic products, whether explicit or implicit, shall be supported by adequate and verifiable evidence regardless of the types of evidential support used to substantiate them, including, where appropriate, expert assessments. Any evidential support needs to be kept in the product's product information file. Where studies are being used as evidence, they shall be relevant to the product and to the benefit claimed, shall follow well-designed, well-conducted methodologies, and shall respect ethical considerations. The level of evidence or substantiation shall be consistent with the type of claim being made, in particular for claims where lack of efficacy may cause a safety problem, for example in some protection claims. Statements of clear exaggeration, which are not to be taken literally by the average end user, hyperbole, or statements of an abstract nature, shall not require substantiation. A hyperbolic claim would be, for example, this perfume gives you wings. A claim extrapolating ingredient properties to the finished product shall be supported by adequate and verifiable evidence, such as by demonstrating the presence of the ingredient at an effective concentration. Honesty. Presentations of a product's performance shall not go beyond the available supporting evidence. For example, the claim, 1 million consumers prefer this product, shall not be allowed if based only on the sale figure of 1 million units. Claims shall not attribute to the product concerned specific, i.e. unique, characteristics, if similar products possess the same characteristics. Fine fragrances, for example, usually do not contain preservatives, due to the high amount of alcohol that they contain. It would therefore be dishonest to highlight the fact that a certain fine fragrance doesn't contain any preservatives. If the action of a product is linked to specific conditions, such as use in association with other products, this shall be clearly stated. For example, if the claimed performance of a shampoo is based on the combined use of that shampoo with a hair conditioner, this shall be specified. Fairness. Claims for cosmetic products shall be objective and shall not denigrate the competitors, nor shall they denigrate ingredients legally used. An example for both, a claim contrary to product X, this product does not contain ingredient Y, which is known to be irritating, shall not be made. Low in allergens because without preservatives is unfair because it assumes that all preservatives are allergenic. Claims for cosmetic products shall not create confusion with the product of a competitor. Informed decision making. Claims should be clear and understandable to the average end user. Claims are an integral part of products and shall contain information allowing the average end user to make an informed choice. Marketing communications shall take into account the capacity of the target audience to comprehend the communication. Marketing communications shall be clear, precise, relevant and understandable by the target audience. Whatever claims are made for a specific cosmetic product, it is important to remember that they have to be based on sound and relevant proof that these claims are true. Regulation 655-2013 also lists some best practices for claim substantiation. Different types of evidential support can be used to substantiate claims. It is usual to substantiate claims by using experimental studies, consumer perception tests, published information, or indeed a combination of these. Producers of cosmetic products shall not only rely on these two regulations, but should also check if there are any additional EU guidelines available for their products. Where additional recommendations from the European Commission are available, they should also be taken into consideration. For example, the European Commission recommendation on the efficacy of sunscreen products and the claims made relating thereto, giving recommendations on labelling and claims that can be made for sunscreen products and how they should be substantiated. We hope you found our presentation useful. More information about the EU cosmetic regulations and cosmetic claims can be found on our website. You can also contact us via email or through social media channels to find out more.